Legend Bowlers. Legend Bowlians. Here we go. This is 85 mod Gundar. And currently we are looking at the Dolphins versus the St. Louis Cardinals. Yes, the St. Louis Cardinals are in the Legend Bowl against Miami Dolphins. So we're going to see how this goes. I'm playing as the Dolphins, see if I can win the Legend Bowl for the year of 1985. Uh, it's on veteran difficulty, which isn't too hard, but it is a challenge. We'll see if I can make it. I'm also going to talk a little bit. Um, Havel, King Havel, the developer, he put up a video. Oh, yesterday, the day before, and he was talking about the fact that, you know, he's pausing on Legend Bowl right now, which makes a lot of sense. You know, it's he's getting it ported, he's doing all that, so you wouldn't expect it. Oh, here's a flyover. I'm going to skip a lot of this, um, just because I don't feel a need for it, but... Y'all in for a good one today. There's a lot of that, a lot of cool stuff they added. I'm just more focused on gameplay. I'm gonna receive this ball. And we're in the middle. So, the main thing the Legend Ball has going for it already, as a lot of people who played it know, is the fact that it's Just a second. The main thing that this game has going for it already, as a lot of people already know, is just the fact that it's extremely fun. Um, it's got a lot of customization in it. It's got let's see sound effects. Yeah. It's got a lot of uh, things that you don't see in other games. Uh, the franchise mode and all that. It's great. It's very simple, but it's great. A lot of people. You know, they want like the full trades and all that stuff. I think it's actually streamlined enough to be a nice pick up and put down uh, without being too too labor intensive to where it gets boring. Um, there's a very small niche market of people who want to do everything. I'm going to lower him a little bit. And yeah, that's fine. Music fine. Lower you down. There we go. All right. Let's resume the game now. Hopefully that'll be good for talking. So, what does the game need? I mean, it's got a lot of stuff. It's already got a lot in it. The fact that one guy did this is crazy. He had help from the Discord. You know, people provided him with assets now and then or whatever, but truly, uh, it really was a one-man project overall. So, that's the kind of thing that's impressive. And the fact that it has all this stuff, the different kinds of defenses, the customization, all that kind of thing, it really is amazing. Going forward, you know, he actually put up a thing about what, what would you like to see for ideas for Legend Bowl 2 and all that. He's trying to figure out what kind of game he wants to make while he's in the porting process. So, what is it that this game needs? Oof, nice defensive play. My fullback completely whiffed on that block. Didn't even try it. What this game needs, for one thing, is it actually, you can customize the team's jerseys, their helmets. You can customize just about everything. What you can't customize, though, is how they play. So, like, every team has the same playbook, and they just randomly select plays. So, one thing that needs to happen is there needs to be a playbook uh, signer, some sort of customizable playbook where you can put different kinds, you know, assigned teams, more run-heavy offenses, uh, more blitz-heavy defenses, all that kind of stuff. You know, real team personality type things. And then... In addition to that, you know, a play editor, that kind of thing would be great in-game. That's pretty obvious. That's something that just about everybody always wants. Oh, nice juke. Oh man, that was a good game. Good game on fourth down. So that's one thing. You know, the teams, the amount of per customization and personality you can put in already is impressive, but it's mostly cosmetic. Um, if you want to do really careful customization as far as, you know, team abilities you have to do that through the team through the individual ratings of the players themselves and that is customizable which is awesome but it's somewhat tedious and also it still doesn't really you know mimic a full i don't know a fully fledged 
individual coaching style or individual offensive and defensive style. So that's one thing it needs. The other thing is that they're, you know, as far as penalties go. Let's see here. Yeah. Oh, that was just me making a bad pass. As far as penalties go, I'm kind of torn. I actually don't like, after playing this game for a while, I realized how much penalties interrupt game flow. And I realized for realism, blah, 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 a lot of people are like, oh, oh, I held on to that one too long. I held on to that one too long. Anyway, I realized that for realism's sake, some people might like to see him in there. But if penalties get put into the game, I would really like to see them be optional. Because I found that I really like, you know, offsides. That's a pretty standard penalty. That's cool. Oh man, I just blew that. So, offsides and stuff like that, uh, kicking out of bounds on the kickoff, those are in here. But those are really the only penalties that are in here. Um, you know, there a whole host of penalties could be added. I think, I don't know, if it's optional, fine, but I do think that having a penalty every few plays would really interrupt the flow of the game, and it kind of creates an opportunity for there to be, I don't know, just kind of lackluster gameplay. I saw the uh, Madden 23 trailer, <laughs> and uh, I was like, it does look like they've made some improvements. Um, looks like they made some improvements, but... Let's face it, I think adding 3,500 new animations... <laughs> 3,500 new animations to Madden, which is already a buggy mess because of the animations. I'm not sure that it's going to solve the problems that they think it will. I just blew that coverage. Where was my... Oh, oh they just twisted me. Nice play. Nice play. I got blown up. See? You can lose this game. I might get all the way to the end of this thing and lose. Neil Lomax. Yeah. I had his football card. Anyway, I just think that, you know, EA adding more animations to an already bloated game will probably just cause people further discontent in the future. <clears throat> Pablo, in, a video, in the video that he started talking about, you know, working on Legend Bowl more, he was talking about actually thinking about doing a 3D football game and stuff like that. I personally, this is kind of a desperate outreach to him through this video, <laughs> begging him not to. I already put a comment in that video like, hey, please don't. And I would say that again, because anytime you go 3D, you know, yeah, it gives more realism and quote-unquote immersion, but it also gives more chance. You have to do more animations. You have to do more physics, more dynamics. It is a huge... You're going to spend another six years on that game. And in the end, will it be worth it? Because people are going to get angry. Because if you don't get the realism ultra high, then they're disappointed. They're like, this isn't real. This isn't sim. You kind of shoot yourself in the foot. Whereas if you keep it pixel art, people fill in the gaps of realism with their mind. Because, oh, hey, it's not supposed to be really real. It's just a game, and that really helps out. I mean, if this game were as it were right now, in the state it is right now, but it was not pixel art, if it was, you know, 3D and all that stuff, it would be bad. People would hate it. Why? Because, hey, this isn't real. <laughs> this isn't, why, does it, why aren't there any penalties? If you got realistic looking players, why don't you have a realistic game? That's how it goes. But that kind of... It's almost like a promise you made unwittingly. Oh, man, you got me. I thought I had that timed right, but I was late. It's almost like you're making kind of a... Not a promise, but you're making a tease to the players. This is going to be hyper real. And then it's not. And it, it never will be. It's absolutely impossible. It's absolutely, I repeat, impossible to make a truly realistic football game. You can't do it. And the reason is, you cannot download the brains of... of what, 53 of 106 men at any given time and put them into a into a game parameter construct. You just can't. There's too much. So because of that, you don't want to try to make it seem like TD. You don't want to try to make it seem like that's what you want to do. Like, or like that's what you've done. EA over promises. They're like, oh, most realistic ever. Yeah, and you know what? 
VA gameplay might be slightly more realistic than this. It might be slightly more realistic than Legend Ball, but it doesn't always feel like it. I've seen Legend Ball do things that I was like, you know what? That's more realistic than a lot of stuff I've seen from Madden. Now, I will admit, I haven't played Madden in many years. Uh, the last one I played a lot was 2008. I played 20, played 2021 with a friend, and it was just, you know, it was okay. It was, you know, the graphics are impressive, but the players didn't feel like they moved right. It, it just didn't feel right. Meanwhile, I get Legend Bowl, and I mean, it's, it's sprites. <laughs> it's little 2D sprites. But I'm having more fun with this than I ever have with Matt. Any of the men. So, I think that there's something to be said for keeping it simple. Man, they are killing me on the ground. These guys. Is that That's Otis Anderson, isn't it? Yep. Wow. Burned me. There's something to be said for keeping it simple. Don't try to do too much. Um... When you do, people expect more. Whatever you give, and that is a key, I think, that I've, that I've learned just from seeing how this game has been developed. Just by seeing what goes on in, in Discord and how guys, you know, the ideas people give. And the ideas, you know, the things that people want, that, that they claim to want in a football game. I mean, you can't put it all in there. You just, you cannot. And so I think keeping it simple, you... You lower the expectations, and that's what you want, because otherwise, if you don't make sure that people have re realistic expectations from the get-go, they, they will go crazy with it. Even me. I mean, I'm, I'm not excluding myself. Now, the difference is what I want is not what I expect. What I want, I understand, is probably not going to happen. Some people don't get that. You can't always get what you want. Well, that's just how it goes. But some people get really furious when they find that out. So I think if you start making 3D games, as a game developer, especially with football, um, you really, oh, there we go, that was time, right? That was a beautiful comeback route catch. Man, I like that. I tell you what, in this game, there's nothing better than a well-timed comeback route, and there's nothing, uh, aside from that, on defense, hitting the guy and separating him from the ball. Which, by the way, is something Madden's making a big deal of. Like, I can hit a guy and separate him from the ball in the Legend Ball, <laughs> so I don't see what the big deal is. I know that they've got all kinds of new animations for it to make it look quote-unquote fluid and organic, but in Legend Ball, I hit a guy, ball pops loose, I know I just did that. I don't think it would feel better in Madden. In fact, I think seeing it in, like, hyper close-up would get annoying. I like the fact that it happens so fast in Legend Ball. Alright, I'm driving. Gotta get gotta get tied up here. Gotta get tied up. These guys are killing me. And I just wanna drive my way down the field and at least make a game of it. I'm only down seven, but that changes fast when they start rolling on you. So that's why I really am kinda concerned about the idea of a 3D game. A 3D football game, especially if it's a one-man dev. I just don't know that you can do it in a way that will make people happy. Now, Legend Bowl, on the other hand, you've already got the base for it. I mean, the base game is dumb. If you add stuff to it, expand the coach mode, make it more of a game plan type simulator, you know, just put more football in it. And it doesn't even have to be a lot more football. <clears throat> just a little more football. I think you would have a great game. Make sure you can do customize, put like a little uh, paint system in here, for customizable logos to make your own logo. A logo maker type program, a little section of the game. A lot of people love that. Oh, did I miss? That's no good. Uh, you know, being able to put more fonts, more number fonts, more uh, end zone fonts, all that stuff. I think that's kind of the way to go. Just expand the base game a little more. And I think you've kind of got what you're looking for. Uh, add more strategy to the coaching mode. Maybe put a trade system in. People really loved the idea of trades. I personally think they're a little bit too exploitable usually, and they're never, I don't know, it's never really that fun. It's not the same as negotiating a real trade. Uh, but people really want that, they really like it, so let them have it. Let them have a, some kind of a trade system. Um, 
Again, you know, penalties. I would prefer those to be optional personally, just because mm -hmm. I really like the game without them. Um, clean up what you got. Add, this one guy actually recommended something that I hadn't even noticed before. And this is kind of funny. I had never noticed that when you run diagonally in this game, your player doesn't turn his shoulders diagonally. It's four point movement. <laughs> it's, four, it's four point animation, so he's only going up or to, the, to either side. So when you run diagonal, he runs straight ahead, but he's just moving diagonally. I didn't even notice that. So that shows you kind of a. Oh man. Oh. I just took the wrong. Oh, my game is really laggy. Come on. I cannot play this game to save my life right now. Anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, I didn't. That shows you what kind of attention to detail and graphics I give. Like, <laughs> I didn't even notice that for the longest time. But you know, go ahead and put those diagonal animations in there. Have the guys able to turn their shoulders at 45 degrees and run diagonally. Little things like that um, would be fine. And you, can, you know, at that point, you're not over animating to the point where it becomes ridiculous. You're just putting the little things in there that, that make it slightly more realistic. And I'm fine with that. Um, a lot of guys want, like, uh, customizable sneakers. Um, a lot of customizing, customizing and, and, you know, personal interest stuff. I think actually, you know, for me, that junk doesn't matter at all. <laughs> I just, I'm like, what? But I think that some people really get into that stuff. And so I think for the gamer crowd, maybe, maybe you want to put more of that in. <clears throat> That's fine with me. Personally, I, I, I can, I can see the benefit, whatever attracts people to the game. But even in spite of that, I still think you have to focus on the support strategy and the core movement of football. You know, right now, you're, you're limited. The way that he coded the, the way that he coded the playbook, the formations that you have in there are the only formations that you can, that you can have. You know, you guys, now there's plenty of them, and then he put formations in here that you don't see commonly, like a team form and all that stuff, which I love. That's one of the reasons that I love this game and why I prefer it to, to any other. You know, I love running team form. Unless I'm the Miami Dolphins, then I don't know why I would try to run too far. I've got Dan Marino. But if you've got, you know, those kinds of offenses, um, it would be nice to turn those into actual offenses and not just formations. And that's something that I think, you know, people don't get. Like, let me just go in here. I-Form is actually pretty fleshed out. So you got I-Form. That's great. I-Form power. That's great. Strong weak so you can line your fullback up to strong on the weak side jokers awesome i love all of that but you know that's not the same as that's basically having one offense is that's kind of just the i form offense you know if you were able to select the i form offense and then go into that and have i form strong i form weak have the flip formations all that stuff you know i form um uh what is it what am I thinking? Oh, I formed Maryland. Maryland I is in here too. Have all those as subsets. That would be awesome. The flex bone. You know, the flex bone is an entire offense in and of itself. So, if you, the more that you can put in, the better. The single wing. The single wing looks like this. It's got two wide receivers out, and then it's got two wings, to, two tight end wings. I mean, there are so many different formations in single wing that you could run. So, just being able to do that would be huge to create an offense. And with multiple formations out of one base offense, and then have that be what you run, or what a particular team runs. I think that's the kind of direction this game could go, and I think it would be it would be 30% better than Madden just with that alone. Because Madden, Madden had a play editor. Excuse me. Madden had a play editor even in Madden 2008. The play editor was there. They took it out. I just completely blew that. I accidentally bumped. <laughs> anyway, well, at least I'm still ahead. <laughs> Dumb. Okay, so... <clears throat> man, sorry. As I was saying, Madden had a play editor as late as 2008. And they just took it out. I guess the story goes... And this is crazy. I didn't realize this until recently, but... The story goes that some guy created a play 
that was extremely difficult to defend, and he used it in online, and it was a uh, it was a rub route to the outside. That same play later on, somebody noticed that uh, Coach uh, Detroit Lions, I believe, somebody from the Detroit Lions ran like the exact same play uh, later on, and so there's this, always this kind of thought that did that guy actually did that play got so well known that an NFL coach copied it? Who, you know, who knows? But that's a pretty interesting theory. But that's why Madden. That's why Madden took out the play editor because this guy made a play that was too strong for online play. Madden's insistence on catering to online play is the kind of thing that's killing. Him. Holy cow! Two twenty-one to two eight in the first half. Yeah, this is a shootout. I got four yards, but they got fifteen yards per carry on the ground. Whew. Okay. Well. There we go. Anyway, I just think that, you know, what Madden has taken out, if you put that into a game, you're gonna, even if, even if it's a 2D pixel art game, some people aren't gonna buy it because of that. That's true. Those people aren't worth your time. Anybody who judges a video game based on graphics alone, they are not worth worrying about in the long run. Because those are the same people those are the same customers who will, as soon you can make a polished, you know, eye candy right. game like Madden, but as soon as something doesn't look quite right to them, they're going to get on the boards, they're going to freak out, and they're going to scream to not buy the game. They're going to tell everybody, oh, this game is terrible. Because they're expecting way more than what you can deliver. I mean, Madden simply can't deliver what Madden is trying to deliver. Madden should know better than to tell people that, oh, we're doing this this year and it's going to be this best thing ever. They should know better than that. But every year they do. I think you can avoid that by being like, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make this game. It's going to be 2D and it's going to be awesome gameplay. And if you hate it because it's 2D, you're lost. Because, you know, I don't have time to worry about that kind of complaint. Sorry. I think if you stick to that, I think you'll be better off in the long run. And I think you'll have actually fewer complaints. You'll still have the people who are upset, but there will be fewer of them. And overall, the people who can recognize what you're doing and why you're doing it, those people will be good, happy players. They'll be the ones who, you, who will give you the best input, the best advice. They'll be the oh, I thought that was my own blocker. <laughs> I was not paying attention. So yeah, I just think the idea of making a 3D game, especially a one-man studio, especially a football game, it's just so much. I just can't imagine him doing that. I genuinely hope he keeps it 2D pixel art. I think he'll be happier. I think the game will. I think the game will be more applauded as a result of it. Because what nobody expects is nobody expects to pick up this silly little pixel art game and have it play like it was. You know, a modern day uh, all pro football emulator almost. I mean, that's almost how this thing plays. So, I think that's kind of the idea here that he needs to, he needs to look at. I think if you have a coach mode that allows you to actually do coach stuff, set practice schedules. You know, like uh, if anybody ever played NFL Head Coach 2009, if you can put something like that in conjunction with what you've already got, as far as you know user gameplay in this game i think then you've got something extremely special uh, i'm gonna go for it here yeah i'm gonna go for it here this is kind of silly but because i think a lot of people actually miss that game in particular i've seen a lot of people wonder where that game went got it. by the way those little tight uh, tight end pop or sneak over the middle and they just kind of uh, slip into the inside there to the interior if you're if they're in a zone man you can hit those 80% of the time against zone you know sometimes they'll zone a guy and they'll bring the safety down all of a sudden to trick you but there we go again yeah five yards of money so yeah I just think that like if you could do a, a more of a head NFL head coach style game put that into coach mode here I mean you couldn't put all that game in there because that's huge but if you could put kind of a basic idea in into a game like this you'd be well on your way there we go 
Man, that was a nice little run. That was beautiful blocking up front. Just had my blockers on the front and slipped right through the crease. That was awesome. That's exactly what I'm looking for on that play. But that's the thing about this game. This game does that. Like, this game does that. Sometimes you just look at it and you're like, how did I just make that happen? And it's because the blocking was right. Right there. I mean, they, they put a 46 on me and I couldn't run up the middle. I don't know why I didn't audible out of it. I was an idiot. But it made me pay for it. And that's what I expect. That's what I look for in a game. Make me pay for my mistakes. And it does that. So... Oh, didn't give me that time. Lionel Hampton with the fullback catch. Two yards away. So yeah, like stuff for coach mode. What would be stuff for coach mode? Setting the practice regimen. Um, setting the drills that each that each guy runs. And have each of those drills for each position give a certain buff uh, to, to each, individual, each individual position group. I think that would be great. I think that would be huge for a game like this. Nice. Thank you for the block, my good man. Um, what else in coach mode? Setting practice regimen. Obviously setting depth chart. Oh, scouting. Overseeing the scouting of new players. Um, customizable draft class. Now, that's something that a lot of guys are already talking about. The ability to customize rosters and draft classes would be a, a huge thing for this game. Um... And I think that that's something, some of these things actually could be done maybe even right now, but but I, as again, Havo is trying to get it ported, he doesn't want to mess with anything until that happens. Totally understandable. Another thing that I think actually could help the game right now, like what could be done right now for this game, you rarely see, and I mean rarely see, sacks in this game. Uh, typically, in a game, if you get one sack, that's good. Two sack games are are like, wow, <laughs> what just happened? Three sack games are unicorns. Uh, if I ever saw one, I would just put the game down and walk away and call my life complete. A uh, video game life, at least. <laughs> uh, see, actually, should I flip it? Let me flip this play and see if that works. Oh, that's going to be terrible. I'm going to do it. Okay, so that was bad, as I expected. Yeah, so what I think could be done to help the sack uh, count in this game, the number of sacks that you get, is a very simple rule, and that is the QB, if he cannot throw the ball away while he's inside the hashes, that will give his a defensive lineman or an inside linebacker just enough time, I think, to get in there. Oh man, my guys didn't run the right way. Give him just enough time uh, to get in there and get a sack. It would bump the sacks up at least one to two, probably two per game. Maybe you start seeing three or four. Just that little tweak alone, I think, could help the sack numbers. Just from what I've counted, because I've watched a lot of these games. I've seen a lot of how this game works. That was bad. Yep. I saw that as I threw it. I don't know why I threw that. I, was, I mean, they were in the right zone and everything. I saw the coverage and just tried to put it in there anyway. Stupid. Anyway, that's one rule. Where If you could just make a rule where the QB can't throw the ball away when he's inside the hashes, I think you're going to see more sacks. And I think the guys, the football guys, you guys are like, I'd love to see more sacks in the game because right now it doesn't feel quite like football. I think that would help them. I think that you'd make a lot of people, uh, I think Havel could make a lot of people happy right there. Um, Another thing, let's see where am I at? Oh, sorry. Got him. Another thing that could be done, I don't know if it could be done right now. Again, so much of this game is hard coded, but another thing that could help is that you'll notice sometimes, as good as a blocking downfield can be in this game, and oftentimes is, I will say, it usually is very good. But there are moments where, especially on sweeps or counters, You'll see guys. God. You'll see guys actually. Um, they'll start running ahead of the of the of the running back, and if they don't see anybody out in front of them immediately, then what they end up doing is they, they cut their block route off and they run backwards, and so they end up trying to block a guy who's behind the running back. Sometimes it even impedes the running back from his course. And 
he'll actually, you know, lose even more yards because of that. So, if there were a way to easily, and I stress easily, if there were to easily change that to where the, you know, down, the blockers who are moving downfield continue moving downfield, I think that could be a help. But, again, I don't expect that. You know, you, you can't expect too much of, of a one-man dev team. And honestly, I don't know if you're watching what's happening in this game, but even this is pretty good. I mean, you're watching this game, like, the the kind of play that you're getting, like, I made a bad pass, it got picked off and run back, I was able to stop him, now I'm driving. It's a good, fun little football game, man. I, you know, as it is, is it worth the price of admission? 100%. 100%. No question it's worth, the t what is it, 25 now? The 25 bucks? Yeah, it's worth that. So, are you getting ripped off if you buy it right now? No, not even in the slightest. Oh! What? Whoa! <laughs> that was awesome. I have replays turned off for the sake of screen time, the uh, screen FPS, but I wish I had it on for that. I think I hit like three guys, two or three guys. That was exciting. <laughs> I think I just missed an extra point again. That's less exciting. I'm not kicking good. I'm not kicking good. That was awesome. But I mean, that's the kind of thing like this game is fun because of that. Like, is that cheesy and kind of stupid? From a, you know, sim, real life sim standpoint? Maybe. But I love it. Because it's kind of a fun little sudden arcade aspect of this game. And that is the weird thing too. This game kind of vacillates between uh, sim and arcade. Like, there will be moments where it feels very sim-like. You're like, wow, this... It's really playing out like a real game, and then suddenly something will happen. And you're like, "Oh, that was that was arcade style," but that was that's what makes it fun. So again, that makes that balance. That's the kind of thing that you don't see in any other game, and that is what people are looking for. If you hear the, the thing that you see most about a game like Madden, people are so upset all the time, and when you ask them what do they want, what they what they invariably say is something different. Half of those people, I guarantee you, they cannot put into words, they cannot properly articulate what it is that they want. But what they say, something different. Every time. But what is different? Well man, this is different. This is different. This is a 2D pixel art game. And it plays out awesome. And it has a balance between the arcade and the sim. Now, I think that is outstanding, and I think if you could just tweak it a little bit, put a little more football in there, you know, put more sacks, however however you want to make that happen. Uh, put more customizable plays, play it under strategy, you know, be able to set uh, even more kinds of defense. You really only have about, uh, what, ten kinds of defense in here? Um, being able to just, to just really hone in and make sure that your players are all where you want them to be on any given play, I think that would go a huge distance. And if you could do that, if you could make, build, take what's here and just add that into it, I think you've already got Legend Bowl 2 made, actually. You release that as Legend Bowl 2, and I think it would be a big hit. Because this game, I mean, even what I'm playing right now, I'm having a great time. <clears throat> I'm having a great time. And so I just think, you know, trying to reinvent the wheel on this one, I don't see a need for it, personally. Now, I think as maybe as a game dev, a guy like Havo, it becomes more about the art, so to speak. It's more about the art of making the game, rather than even the game itself. Like, Havo spent so much time making the game, he hadn't really gotten to play that much. That's why he started doing all these gameplay videos. Because it was really his chance to explore the game that he had made. And that's crazy to me. I mean, that's kind of sad in a way. But that's really what it is. That's how most people are. If they're, if they're creator types, they're going to make something. And they put so much into making it that they very rarely get a chance to actually enjoy what they've made. And that's kind of neat. Even though it is kind of sad. And so I can understand how a guy like Pavel wanted to become better at his craft, so to speak, although I tend to find that word a little pedantic, craft, but wanting to be better at what he does, 
maybe he would be maybe that's why you know you start thinking man should i make a 3d game should i make a you know more life lifelike sim what should i do here so i can't blame the guy for that you know it's like when people get upset at a band for coming out with a different sound don't get upset at them for doing something different you know i'm sure they get tired of playing the same song over and over it's their music not yours that doesn't mean you have to like it, but it is there. So that's why Hollow does try to make. Oh, I just threw that in the. Oof. See, they they <laughs> they cut off that route I like so much. So yeah, so if Hollow did decide to make a 3D game, you know, who am I to criticize so much? It would be one of those things where you just have to kind of be like, okay, we'll see how it goes. But the reason that I'm so kind of adamantly against that right now is just because look at this game. I mean, look at what it is right now. It's awesome. There's no reason to freak out and try to try to create something better. I think it's as good as you as you want it to be right now. I'm gonna let this clock drain. These guys have no timeouts left. I'm not gonna cut. I'm gonna try if if I can get this. I can go. I can run out this clock. So, it's worth it to me. And um, if, yes, I mean, if they get a touchdown and two point conversion, the best they're going to do is tie. So I'm going to let this run all the way down. Try to get this first down, and if I can get it, then I've won. I've won the Legend Bowl. Yes, good. Yeah, man. So that's it. I mean, I love this game. I, I think this game is great for Legend Bowl 2. I think there are just a few things that need to be added. I think if you, what Pablo did with allowing it to be moddable, as moddable as possible, keep that. Because I think, uh, honestly, it's smart. If you're a dev, what am I doing? I need to audible to run here. If you're a game dev, let the community do the work. <laughs> you know, you, you make the shell, and then you let the modder crew go crazy and see what they come up with. Because the truth is, maybe you don't have time to be doing all that other crazy stuff that everybody's asking you to do. But maybe the mod team can. Maybe the guys who are really good modders that, that are hanging around your game, maybe they can do it. So let them. You know, there's nothing wrong with letting other people make the game better. Or even if it's not better, but letting the game go different directions. Then, uh, then you attract more players because, hey, maybe they didn't want that game or that team but you let them build a new team you let them put new fields in you let them do all this other stuff maybe that's how you get them so i think that's kind of a great way to do things and i hope that he keeps that i do hope he keeps them the mod ability of the game oh man what a pretty little blocking scheme and a nice little four yard run that was so pretty that was a trap play that just happened to work right and I like that. That's it. That's game, man. Just won the Legend Bowl. Milestone. Win the Legend Bowl. 11 first downs. 370 yards. 307 passing. 63 rushing. I got 3 yards per carry. I brought down their average. They were 15 in the first half. And they only they could get down to 11. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's still way too many. Uh, they crushed me on the ground, but good enough for me. Passing yards. I only allowed them 82 passing, though. Man, look at that. Yeah. Only 82 passing yards to my 307. So, I got them. I had that one turnover, that one stupid TD. Oh, man. Seven minutes. Well, six minutes and 40 seconds more time of possession than them. That's great. That is great. Let's go down and play the game. Who was it? Oh, you know what? I'm not even going to complain about that. That dude averaged 11 yards per carry, and he had that TD. Yeah, he he beat up on me. He was good. Two for 71 on the ground, on the, in the air. And he, I mean, caught both of his targets. Yeah, I'm not mad about it. That's, that's a good player of the game right there. My stats at Marino, 138.3, 21 of 26, nearly 81% pass completion percentage. I did throw a TD, though. One of those five incompletions was an interception. I threw three TDs and one pick. What about the other guy? Lomax, six of eight. Six of eight. 
mean, that guy missed two throws. He threw it well. 140, he has a higher rating than I do. Higher rating than Dan. Neil Lomax has a higher QB rating than Dan Marino, but he only threw it eight times. You gotta throw it more than that. What about the, there's Anderson. Oh, and then this dude, Farrell. Yeah, Earl Farrell. 14 yards per carry. What kind of crazy? That's amazing. All right, what about me? 28th and 15 for 61. That's a pretty cool average. You know? I mean, 15, that's very NFL-like. Huh. Carter was the guy who dragged my average down more. But, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna whine. Everybody contributed. Hardy. Yep. He was my possession receiver, my tight end. Hampton. Man, that one catch that he had for 26 yards, that was awesome. And then he also had a TD. Yeah. Clayton, 3 for 89. Duper had zero catches. I didn't get Mark Duper a single catch in the Super Bowl. That's a fail. That's a fail on my part. It definitely is. Huh. Too bad. Wow. These guys. <laughs> Look at that basketball. Those are some wide receivers right there. Nobody caught more than two passes. And the guy who did was a halfback. That is quite a day. Oh, who got the sack? Yeah, they got one sack on Baker. Hmm. Not many passes defense either, man. Look at that, just two. One by cornerback, and one by strong safety. And then on my side, I have one, two. Strong safety, and inside linebacker. Wow. That was a good game. I gotta say, that was a really good, that was a satisfying legend ball. Yeah, this is actually all my fault though. I can't blame Fwad because <laughs> I was not kicking off one of four. Whew, he scored one point. Sorry, buddy. I, I should have been more mindful of that bar. Donahue, yeah, see this guy? He got five. Way to go, Neil O'Donoghue. Carl Birdsong. That's quite a name. I like that name. Carl Birdsong. Sounds like a character from a novel. Alright. Reggie Roby. He only punted once, but it was for 48 yards. But it was a net 29, because I had allowed way too many kick return yards on it. Four for 80. Alright, that's a good. That's a nice kick return. And then two for 17 on punts. Smith, three for 58. Yeah, one for 18. Alright. And we're back to the QBs. Danny Marino finally gets his ring. It's kind of interesting because St. Louis was in the championship game against the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> That's who they beat to face the Miami Dolphins in this game, this uh, Legend Bowl. So it could have been a revenge game, but San Francisco blew it in the championship game. And um, I don't know. I think there's some kind of weird poetic justice in that, them not even reaching the Super Bowl against Miami in this case. So that's cool. Well, I'm going to end this game. And we're going to see what happens next. Coach Shula wins one, but can he repeat? I hope so. I mean, technically, this isn't his first go around. You know, Cardinals blew it as usual in Legend Bowl. Oh, the Cardinals. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. A lot of you guys, some of you guys who are younger may not even remember that St. Louis used to be the Cardinals. The Cardinals were there first before Arizona. The Rams were also in St. Louis. Legend Bowl champions. There's my team. 1986. Yep. 85 to 86. Go. And my alts. There we go. Continue. Start the off season. So anyway, I mean, look at all this stuff that's already in this game. That's what I'm saying, man. Havo, if you're out there, if you're listening, just do more of this. Just do more of this. Just take the stuff that you didn't get to put in this version, put it into Legend Bolt 2, then worry about 3D. Now, if you want to do some Mod 7 stuff, you know, like Super NES or whatever, for the stadiums, I get it. Fine. But seriously, man, you're already... This game is already so good. I mean, if it's not broken, don't try and fix it. Because this thing is awesome. And uh, it's uh, 
Um, it's the only it's the only video game I've ever spent this much time with, truly. Well, maybe when I was a kid, maybe you know the original Madden '94, '95, or whatever. But even then, nah. This game is where it's at. So just do more of this. Keep what you got. Build it, but don't try to overbuild it. Don't try. Don't don't go EA on us. <laughs> just just go keep on this on a slow steady pace just kind of incrementally building on what you have here and i think people are going to be very happy you know play editor um playbook assignment you know custom playbooks per team um just clean it just the little make the blocking work be able to do zone and man because sometimes you can't really you can't direct which is which in this game um ability to do multiple formations uh, sub formations of per per offense so single wing and then Everything underneath that, single wing split, single wing wide, all that, all that stuff. Uh, coach mode, be the ability to be able to set um, the training regimen and the practice for each position group. The ability to control reps for different players. Um, the ability to uh, to command and control your scouting team. That kind of thing. That would be, I think, awesome. And have that tie into you know how well your scouting team does. Have that tie into how much information you get on each individual player coming up in the draft. That's the kind of thing. That little strategy, make it as strategic as possible, and that's going to be in the long term what people are going to love. Now, the other stuff, I know the guys. You know, Freddie T <laughs> loves like he's got so many graphics things. Don't ignore that. I'm not. I'm not saying ignore that because those guys, they know what appeals to gamers. That's super important. Uh, Mr. Downtempo talking about the QB wristbands and all that stuff. To me, I don't care. I genuinely don't. But there are probably a lot of people who would love to see that. So I'm not saying listen, you know, don't listen to anybody else. But please, uh, maybe table that 3D football idea for right now and just go with what you got. That's it. I hope you're cool. Have a good night.